Hey friends, B Dougie here back with another video. And uh, this video is gonna be back to what I used to do back in the day when I started when I started publishing videos on this channel, and that's essentially read Twitter to you. If you are familiar with this channel, it's a channel that I focus on developer tools and career discussions and tips. Uh, definitely hit the like and subscribe. Also, shout out to my Twitch channel, where every Tuesday and Friday I do some live coding and sort of walk through building tools and projects together. So one of the first videos that I had made on this channel, um, when I sort of really picked up this sort of, this doing YouTube content, uh, actually specifically, one of the first videos I made uh, when I decided I was gonna do YouTube developer content uh, was about should I learn JavaScript? And in that video, I pointed to a Twitter account, uh, which was uh, ne Nehemiah, and uh, he, I don't know, I remember what he actually tweeted, actually, I can go back into the, the Wayback Machine and look at what I said. Learning a JavaScript framework before learning JavaScript is like fill in the blank. Someone responded basically saying like, it's trying to be a mechanic without actually driving a car. Um, but I think that was debunked. Actually, you can be a mechanic and not drive a car. That's totally possible. Yeah, so he ended up getting like 868 likes, which is way more likes than I've ever gotten any of my, <laughs> any of my tweets, which, uh, you know, if you want to follow me and like my tweets, please be Doug Yo on Twitter. His tweet was about learning JavaScript frameworks before you actually learn JavaScript. And uh, my, my coworker, I mentioned in the video, but I just, I found that fascinating because I think we're at a point where JavaScript has evolved enough and things like React and these meta React frameworks, you can actually get started in JavaScript so quickly. Uh, I did a whole video with uh, Anthony Campolo on my other channel. We did a React app but we use Redwood JS to connect all the dots. So you don't actually have to know React specifically. You just need to know how to run a couple commands on the command line. And I was kind of blown away. So I think we've evolved uh, past that and uh, definitely go watch that video if you want to hear more of my thoughts on this. But um, it's funny because I, I looked at this tweet um, where he, he asked about a developer worthy setup. And I think, honestly, I think uh, he's actually worth the follow. I'm gonna go ahead and follow him right now uh, because he actually makes some pretty good content. I didn't know who he was before, but I'm, I'm following Nehemiah now because his content is actually pretty good. Uh, but what I'm getting at is, so I was just scrolling through Twitter and I saw someone who I follow. She um, quoted a, a, a reply from the tweet I just showed you. Uh, well, basically the take. Uh, someone actually tweeted and it, their, their take is, I wouldn't trust someone. <laughs> This is so bad. Uh, I wouldn't trust someone who written. I wouldn't trust code written by someone working with just a laptop and no external monitor, uh, keyboards, etc. Any more than I would trust a dentist with an ice pick and a pair of pliers. Uh, have some self-respect and be a professional. Invest in tools and workspace. Uh, yeah, that sucks. Um, and I, I say this even though I just sh shipped a video on this channel about my setup and my setup for live streaming and doing YouTube. I do want to make a point that. All the, the camera that I'm using, the mixer, the microphones, like that doesn't make you a better programmer. Like to be quite honest, I, do, I spend probably way more time editing video this week than actually shipping code, be, to be quite honest. So if the goal is to become a YouTube sensation or a developer, a leader in the YouTube, <laughs> to be a leader in the YouTube developer space, then yeah, cameras and monitors and stuff like that, yeah, that would help because uh, they look great as thumbnails, but that's not gonna make you a better programmer making yourself a better programmer is just by writing code. And it doesn't matter what you write code on. So if you have a keyboard, external keyboard, a mechanical keyboard, um, a Windows keyboard from 1995, it doesn't matter. Well, being able to write code is what matters. So um, yeah, this take is kind of trash. Like some people use Twitter in, in a sense that they just ship hot takes on a regular basis. And I think this is what they're doing. Uh, hats off to them. They definitely uh, ruffled some feathers, but uh, I bring this up because <laughs> it, it it's a take that it, it doesn't belong uh, it doesn't belong in that conversation. Uh, I think Nehemiah was actually just making tongue in cheek like a joke about the fact that his setup is probably pretty awful. And I actually mentioned about my setup um, back when I was shipping the Netlify uh, dashboard. And if you don't know this, uh, if you don't know this, um, I used to work for this company called Netlify. I mentioned this a couple times on this channel, but you know, this could be your first video. And as Stanley says, imagine every issue is someone's first issue. But this dashboard here, uh, <laughs> so the majority of this is, has, has been touched by other developers uh, since I left Netlify. So I can't claim that I, I built all this stuff. Um, 
But this was the dashboard that I really got my sort of my teeth cut on doing front end development. Um, it's funny because when I first interviewed at Netlify and got the job there, I had actually not done a ton of front end development. I probably spent about a year prior um, after doing only a year prior to that doing development. So I was about a couple years in my career. Uh, doing front-end development, specifically in the sense of just cleaning up JavaScript code. Uh, I didn't really have a good understanding of CSS and the web and even using the Chrome console. And it's all stuff that I had to learn on the job while at Netlify. Um, <clears throat> surprisingly enough, I didn't actually, <laughs> I didn't spend a lot of time researching that and it, didn't, it actually didn't come up in the interview. And I, I would say sometimes you could probably psych yourself out of doing interviews because you think you might need to know all this stuff. Uh, sometimes it's just easiest just to apply and see if they respond to you. Uh, what's even easier is actually just reaching out to people directly and seeing if they have a job. Um, I've seen a couple people get hired even at Netlify uh, doing that just that. The basic UI was actually given to me by a designer. Uh, but me sort of wiring all this to work with the Redux store and re with the React components, I did specifically all from this chair. Actually, I'm going to put the chair here. Uh, I did it all from this chair. And it's because uh, at Netlify, we actually had an office and I used to sit in the office and had a desk, uh, actually the very similar desk that I have right here in front of me. And uh, it was a standing desk and it was great. It had a nice chair, it had one monitor. And I used, I, I was kind of, I'm a person who doesn't keep a lot of stuff on my desk. So I got pictures or knickknacks. It was just a desk, a monitor and my laptop. And at that time, I didn't even have a keyboard. Um, I ended up picking up this keyboard, which uh, I talk about in, um, my last video, which is the, the video where I talked through, well, a couple of videos ago, where I talked through my desk setup. It's the Magic Force keyboard. I picked it up because it was $40 at the time. Cheapest keyboard I can get. I sort of wanted to jump into doing mechanical keyboards and that was my introduction. I didn't want to spend a hundred and something dollars on a keyboard. Um, so I say that because I built that entire UI uh, as the only front end developer at the time, to mind you too as well. So I, I joined Netlify as employee three. Uh, Roughly, I think that's around the number that I, I was. Um, we had uh, contractors as well um, at the time, but as far as official employees, not a founder. Uh, employee number three, I think is the how my math goes. That's how I built that UI is from that chair and sometimes with this keyboard. And the thing is that, that this keyboard only existed at the office. Uh, I was working from home two, two times a week. So because I lived in a one bedroom apartment with my at the time, four-year-old son and wife, um, my only option to get work done was actually work in the garage. Uh, the type of house thing that I'm sort of referring to in the, the Bay Area, uh, it has a split level. We have a living room, a bedroom, and then below the bedroom, there's a garage. Uh, it was a one-car garage. It's very common in, in San Francisco. But what I'm getting at is the garage sounds like a luxury. Uh, I'm just trying to point out it's, it wasn't a luxury. I was paying 70, 1700 bucks a month for rent uh, to and for the privilege of having a garage and working out of it. And that's where I, where I did all my work. And the only reason I was working from that chair is because that setup was not meant to be permanent. Uh, that setup was meant just for me to work from home one day a week and not work from the bed bedroom. Uh, we did have a kitchen table, but with the amount of in, uh, interactions and everybody being at home while me also working from home, uh, it just, didn't cut quite work out. I uh, also want to point out, this is back in 2016, 2017 as well, is the, the, the two years I worked at Netlify. Uh, and sort of, that was my setup. And it got to the point where even during the holidays where I didn't go in the office as, as often, like I was working there full time, five days a week, sometimes on the weekend, from a folding chair. Uh, so I just want to point out that I built that entire UI that I'm showing you from a folding chair and from not even a keyboard, I was actually using my laptop the entire time, so I had no monitor. Um, I, I, I would have loved to, to buy a monitor, but um, something that I don't talk about a lot is how like what my salary is today and what my salary was then. Uh, I will say that I was making the high five figures um, at Netlify uh, when I first joined, and it was enough for me to get by. At the time, it was enough for me and my wife to get by, uh, and then also put my kid into a, a daycare uh, during the day. Um, but what I'm getting at is like, I wasn't making a ton of money. I wasn't like rich. Um, I'm sure NetLify is going to be worth tons of money down the road. And like, I do have stock in the company, which is great. But at that time I didn't have the means to go buy a monitor, go buy a desk at home, go buy all the stuff, which is why I went in the office most days during the week. But, um, I sell this because I think that was, um, <laughs> not the best look for, um, who was it? Pseudo, pseudo echo. Um, 
I, I'm sure they figured it out. A lot of people have replied to them. I don't think I need to sort of pile on. Um, but what I do want to uh, just point out that the best tools that you have are the tools you have today. So if you have a laptop, if you have a PC, uh, if you have an iPad, learn how to code on the thing you have. And then once you get started, then try to figure out how you could sort of sell stuff or borrow and um, figure out the rest of it. Uh, what I love about <laughs> coding today is that you can actually open up a GitHub code space today. Um, shout out to GitHub code spaces. I don't talk about GitHub code spaces on the channel enough because I haven't used it a ton, but uh, look out for some new videos on code spaces uh, and how you can just code directly from your phone, directly from your iPad, from wherever you're at and ship a, a, a project and right? learn how to use GitHub. So uh, I say all that. Uh, if you're interested in learning more about uh, my journey and my story, definitely hit like and subscribe uh, on this channel. I try to uh, ship at least a, a video a week. I've um, also been focused on developer automation. So if you are interested at all in GitHub Actions, I'm doing a series on Twitter. So check out my Twitter account, bdougieyo. Uh, I'm doing every day this month, I will be talking about a new feature or a new tip on GitHub Actions. So follow me over there and stay saucy.